<sighs> I didn't think I'd have to do this. But I guess this leaves me with no other choice. Oh well then, let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Eugene Finder speaking. So for two days, today and hopefully tomorrow, I'll be discussing about two anime which share a really distinct similarity. And I'm pretty sure by now you will have guessed what that similarity is. But for today specifically, I want to talk about an anime which has been considered to be one of the most hyped up anime of the 1990s, and that is Neon Genesis Evangelion. Some of the reasons for the amount of hype that it's received it may include its really unique way of representing the mecha genre, as if the giant robots of anime aren't all that significant already. Or it could be its fascinating depiction of a dystopian future devastated by monsters known as angels. Or it is also possible that it is due to the presence of Ayanami Rei, a character that is hardly faced emotionally by any statement or situation, except for insults to Ikari Gendo. <laughs> This character is often regarded as the pioneer of an anime stereotype, resulting in future characters such as Yuki from The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya and Kanade from Angel Beats. But this video has nothing to do with all of that because we will be discussing about the ending and oh, almost forgot about that. Just so you know that because this uh, video is going to be about the ending of Neon Genesis Evangelion, there will be spoiler alerts. So unless you're okay with that or you have already watched the series please don't watch this because uh, it would be better if you uh, find out for yourself what's going on so by the end of the series the characters go through a human instrumentality project which i still have no idea what its purpose is focus is given mainly on the main character which is ikari sinji and I think he is being conditioned by everyone to stabilize his mental state. At this point of time, the proclaimed last angel has been destroyed. However, their significance to the anime was not mentioned at all after that. Instead, we are given some really mind-boggling imagery as Shinji is being lectured and enlightened by the people close to him. When he finally succeeds in stabilizing his mental state, the series ends with everyone congratulating him for that. And I was like, really? Really, man? Is, is this how it's going to end? Come on, don't do this. Ah, ah, God damn it. If you couldn't tell from that, I found the ending to be highly unsatisfying. It's not that I don't like the ending episode or anything, but it just felt so unfulfilling. And to back up my statement of why I thought the ending episodes were unfulfilling, here are my points. The biggest issue is of course the total ignorance of the big picture. With the last angel defeated, wouldn't it make more sense to show what happened to the rest of the world? Was human society able to live without fear now? Actually, now that I think about it, isn't it strange that I actually finished this in 2016 when the main plot actually took place around 2015-2016? Kinda weird eh? But anyway, back on topic. Also, how did humans move on from there? Why did the angels attack the humans in the first place? And why ignore all that? At least try to mention something about that. It would make the ending episode so much more interesting. And also, I would talk about the giant robots known as Evangelions, because isn't this anime largely revolving around them? What happened to them after the final battle? Why is it that they can somehow develop a mind of their own sometimes? Those were not mentioned either. And even many of the characters were not fully addressed. Although the two, last two episodes deals with interrogating the characters, it is still quite hard to understand why many of them tend to have extreme psychological destability. I know some of their backstory was mentioned, but we only get to see bits and pieces and it can get really confusing. 
And of course, we have our main character, Shinji. I think he suffers from mental destability more than anybody else. But his backstory is seriously lacking considering how the entire last episode is focused on him. I mean, why was the human instrumentality project on him so important? Was Shinji really that important of a person? If so, why? I don't see his ultimate importance even if he is an EVA pilot. And also, what happened after he was mentally stabilized? Like, what? And just to throw it in there, why is it that only 14 year olds can pilot the Evangelions? That's probably the biggest question I have throughout the entire series. But here's a question to be considered. Do I think that the anime deserved the amount of hype that it got? And I would have to answer with almost. If the ending had been much better written, I would have really liked this anime. Just to be honest though, the first half of the series didn't really show anything too interesting. I mean, the episodes were good, but there wasn't anything really outstanding. But from episode 13, things really started to kick off as it became more dark and intense and I had really high hopes for the series. And then that happened. Overall though, I give this series 7 out of 10 stars. That means that I would still recommend this series, but it is not of a high priority. And that's mainly because of the ending. But hey, I thought the rest of the series was handled pretty well, and it was a really good representation of the mega anime genre. But of course, I'm very certain this video is going to spark a lot of controversy. So as usual, I would like to know your thoughts on the whole matter. Did you like the ending and thought that this anime was the greatest ever? Did you enjoy the anime as a whole? Or did you like the anime but had really big problems with the ending because it was rather unfulfilling? Or did you absolutely hated everything about this anime and thought it was total trash? I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below. Also, along with this video, I would like to give a big shout out to Tristan Gallen, also known as Arcada from Glass Reflection. Neon Genesis Evangelion being in your list of 5 anime to watch before you die was absolutely worth it. This would be the last anime series that I would watch from this list. I have yet to watch Akira and I probably won't for a very long time because I'm planning on focusing on anime series first instead of anime films. And I guess I'll leave it at that. This topic will not be over yet as I shall continue my discussions on endings in my next video. Oh boy, it's going to be a surprise. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next time of whatever I make. Until next time, bye!